my first book review. I have never done a book review before. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> I don't know how to be critical about books that I like. I know how to be critical of books that I hate, but... Hello everyone, it's Carolyn here, and today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done before but that I probably should have done already, and that is a book review. And the book that I am reviewing is Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. And this is a graphic novel that is basically a continuation of the Lunar Chronicles series, which, as I've said many times before, I am in love with. I love the series to pieces. It's incredible. I recommend it to everybody. And since this is... A continuation of that series this video is going to have some spoilers for that series because this takes place after the events of winter so if you haven't read those books maybe don't watch this video maybe go read them and then come back because you should read them anyway <laughs> I have never read a graphic novel before this um, I wasn't actually really sure what they were um, I mean I know that they had graphics and <laughs> it was a novel but um, <laughs> Basically, at least this one is, it's like a comic book. Um, it tells a story through pictures, captions, and quote bubbles, and it's really cool. Um, so this particular volume tells the story of Aiko. Aiko was Cinder's best friend slash android in the Lunar Chronicles, and Aiko has been tasked with rounding up all of the rogue wolf mutant soldiers that Levon created and sicked on Earth. So they're, those wolf uh, soldiers have gone rogue and they're attacking and killing Earthens. So Cinder sends Iko to go apprehend all of these soldiers. And that's what's happening in this volume. This is volume one. Volume two comes out in January. Unfortunately, that's far away, but... <laughs> I really, really enjoyed this. It was a quick read because it's mostly pictures, um, but it was also really interesting because it's told from Aiko's point of view, which we haven't gotten before, and she is the narrator. So the whole thing has kind of a really funny tone because Aiko is very funny, and the illustrations are really cool, and also what I really liked is seeing the characters that I already love from the Lunar Chronicles because they all do make appearances in this. Um, it was cool to see them in picture form, but I understand that um, a lot of people who read this didn't like that because they felt like it kind of destroyed their like visualizations of these characters, and I understand that, but for me, it's a good thing. That's why um, I really like when books become movies, because I like to see what they look like because when I'm reading I visualize when I read and I visualize characters when I read but I kind of don't see them in much detail in my head even if there's a lot of descriptions I just like don't picture them well I kind of like with Cinder I pictured her as just like a, a person with a ponytail and a metal hand like that's it and, like, I can distinguish who is who, and, like, I know what's happening when I visualize it in my mind, but if I had to try to recall what I thought Cinder looked like, she's just kind of a faceless person. Um, and so that's why I really liked seeing what these characters were actually meant to look like. I'm assuming it's what they're meant to look like. I'm assuming that Marissa Meyer didn't illustrate this. It was illustrated by Doug Holgate. Um, so I'm assuming that she had input with that and like she oversaw the illustration so I'm going to assume that this is what she meant for the characters to look like but um it's really cool you get to see like you see Cinder and you see Kai and Thorn who I still love I love him even more now which I didn't think was possible but after this I love him even more than I did before and you've got Scarlet and Wolf Winter Jason Cress and I go our heroine for the day um so it's very cool to see them and they all make cameos throughout this you get to see cinder um in her cabinet meetings on luna 
you get to see Cress and Thorn on the Rampion. They're distributing uh, the antidote for the plague. Um, you get to see how Winter and Jason are doing. Winter is now an ambassador to Earth. Jason is forever her protector. That's another thing um, about this that I liked was getting a visual for Winter especially because for some reason when I was reading I thought I kept picturing Winter as like a little girl like a 10 year old girl for some reason even though in my head I knew she was a teenager I knew she was older than Cinder who I was picturing as like a 16 year old but um, for some reason I was picturing her as like a little girl and it got weird with the Jason stuff um, maybe that's why I never really shipped them together much, <laughs> um, but it, it was nice seeing what she's actually supposed to look like, so that's good. And with the scars, too, I wasn't really sure how those looked on her face, but, um, I just, I love it so much. Um, it's funny, like I said, there's action. Uh, Aiko is a badass, of course, we all knew she was, but you get to actually physically see it happen, which is so cool. Um, and it ends on a cliffhanger, which I don't like cliffhangers, especially when this is newly published and the second one doesn't come out for months. But, um, yeah, so I highly recommend this, especially if you're already a fan of the Lunar Chronicles. But, again, if you have, like, a specific visualization of the characters in your mind and you don't want that replaced or ruined, I mean... I don't know, but I, I think, you know, this updates you on the characters, you get to see what they've all been doing since the end, and you get to see them interact with each other again, which is so great. Yeah, there isn't, of course, <laughs> there isn't a lot of plot in this. I think this is mostly meant to be, like, fan service, which I don't mind that at all. Like, that's totally fine with me, but, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's about Aiko taking down these soldiers and that's all that happens and she meets up with her friends and there's a little bit of romantic tension <laughs> wink wink that's a reference to this so yeah definitely um for fans of the books this is a must read and if you're not a fan of the books then don't read this because that's dumb <laughs> because you're not going to know who any of these characters are you're not going to know what the plot is Although it is kind of, Aiko does narrate and she kind of describes what's going on and describes the characters and like introduces them, so maybe if you haven't read it, maybe you could understand, but that's just dumb. Why would you do that? I don't know. <laughs> but yes, I give this a 5 out of 5 on Goodreads because I loved it and I think I'm, this is a library copy, I think I'm going to buy my own copy because I love it so much. Uh, but yeah, the... Next volume comes out January, I don't know the exact date, but January 2018, which I mean that's far enough away, at least in my mind, that uh, I'm not counting on the days yet, but very, very good, very entertaining. I am bad at being critical, I don't know, what to, I don't have any criticisms, except like I said, the plot's kind of thin, but like it's fan service. If you're a fan, you're gonna like it, and if you're not, then you won't. That's it. <laughs> I'm not good at reviews. People who follow me on Goodreads probably know that already. I just go, this was good, or this was not good. <laughs> this was good. <laughs> this was good. Okay, so that's that. Um, I just wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit because I haven't heard anything about it at all. I think it was a recent release. I found it on Goodreads. Um, I think it was in the new releases part and I got it from the library and I read it but I haven't heard anybody talking about this and since it is based on Lunar Chronicles I would think it would be more anticipated or more people would be more excited about it but I guess not so um I just wanted to let everybody know that that's a thing go read it it's so good <laughs> and there will be more so keep an eye out for those so, okay, quick update. I was just at the library again today, and I got more books. I got yet another Marissa Meyer book. It's Heartless. I am sure many of you have heard of this already, um, especially if you are a Mar Marissa Meyer fan. Um, it is a retelling of Alice in Wonderland, so she is sticking with her theme of retelling fairy tales, which I am so happy about because that's what I loved about the Lunar Chronicles. Um, this is about a girl named Catherine, who is one of the most desired girls in Wonderland. And she wants to be a baker. She wants to open a bakery. 
who doesn't. And her mother doesn't think she should because she's supposed to be a queen. Uh, she's supposed to get a marriage proposal from the king because the king is in love with her, I guess. And she falls in love with someone who's not the king. That's sad. So yeah. I don't know. I've heard this isn't as good as Lunar Chronicles, but of course I'm gonna try it. I mean, I love Marissa Meyer's writing, so it should be really good. Next I have The Disappearances by Emily Bain Murphy, which is another new release um, that I don't really know anything about. <laughs> this is about a girl who, and her mother, and uh, um, they have their experiences, they, like, all the things, like, their memories, I guess, and, like, sense of things and like like reflections and the ability to dream those things all disappear every seven years and the people in her town think her mother is responsible for some reason and so her name is Aaliyah or Ayla, Ayla Quinn and basically she has to decide what's really happening to clear her mother's name I guess um the cover is really cool really beautiful to be honest that's why I picked this up um, but, uh, yeah, so that sounds kind of interesting. The ratings on Goodreads are good. So I had to read that one. Next I have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. Yes, I finally got a Sarah J. Mass book. People on BookTube are obsessed with this series as well as the Th Throne of Glass series. I just never really had any interest in it. But, um, I never had any interest in the Lunar Chronicles either. And I took a chance on it and I loved it. So I'm going to trust the masses on this one. Again, I'm not going to bother saying what's it, what it's about because it is hugely popular. I'm sure almost everybody has read this by now. I'm sure I'm the last one on this bandwagon, but I'm going to give it a shot. We'll see. Lastly, I have Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. And this, I found the third book in the new releases section of Goodreads, and it sounded really cool. But then I realized it was the third book in a series, so I went back and got the first one. So basically, this is like a retelling of history as if the uh, Library of Alexandria was never burnt down, I believe. Um, and so now there's this thing called the Great Library, which is very powerful. It's like the most powerful thing in the world. Um, they give everyone knowledge and alchemy is real, and you're not allowed to own books personally. That's a nightmare. This is a dystopia. So there's this <clears throat> this boy named Jess who has, his family has their own little library. It's legal. That's where he gets all his knowledge from. Um, and he is a spy for his family. Um, it, like he works at the library, the great library, and he's a spy. I guess it's just about that conflict. <laughs> so basically it's like a world where one entity controls the knowledge of the masses. Dystopia. Very relevant. But uh, yeah, so I really wanted to read the third book. So I'm going to read the first book and see if it's good. It sounds very interesting. The covers of all the books in the series are gorgeous, um, so it should be good. So that is what I have at the moment. I still have to read Love and Gelato, It's All the Boys I've Loved Before, and Why We Broke Up um, from my original August TBR video. I haven't read those yet. Uh, and I tried to read Carry On Barry Morrell. Guess what? I hated it. I, I mean, I didn't really give it a chance to be honest, but after 15 pages I, I couldn't do it anymore. I just hated it. And I was like, I have so many more things that I actually want to read, that I'm excited to read, and so reading a book that's like this thick that I don't want to read is a waste of time. So I DNF'd it and went back to the library. And maybe one day I'll come back to it, but probably not. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, if you haven't read the Lunar Chronicles, read the Lunar Chronicles. I will say that to everyone I know for the rest of my life because I love this series. Um, and if you've already read the Lunar Chronicles, read Wires and Nerve. It's so cool. <laughs> and I will keep you posted with these other books that I got from the library and let you know if they're any good. Uh, yeah, so keep on reading, folks. I'm Carolyn. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.